your favorite actor, your favorite company, your favorite entrepreneur, your favorite author or storyteller or musician or band. It doesn't matter. The reason why they are your favorite is because they say something. They make you feel something and they create something and put it out in the world and you look at what they're doing. You look at them with admiration. You look at how bold they are. You look that they're willing to do the things that frankly we're too afraid to do. And we love it. We love them for it. Up until a point they say something that we don't like, that offends us. And then suddenly like, oh, no, no, we, we don't like that boldness. We don't like that courage. We don't like how audacious they are. We want to tear them down. Last week, Taylor Swift puts out a music video for her new album. She puts out Antihero, a music video where she steps on a scale and the thing on the scale says fat. Fat. Oh, no. Taylor Swift, you're not fat. Of course Taylor Swift isn't fat. But it doesn't mean that she doesn't think that she is or feel that she is or she doesn't have these stories that she tells herself. But no, 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 she says the word fat. You can't say that today. We look at these artists, your actors, your writers, your podcasters, your speakers, your, your musicians, directors, people who make stuff. People who make stuff that we all admire. People who make stuff that has a message that hits us in our heart, that is a little controversial, that, that stands out a little bit. We look at them. We look at what they do. And if we like it and agree with it, we go bravo. And if we don't like it, if it makes us feel uncomfortable, if it embarrasses us, if it says something for some reason that happens to go against whatever we believe and we know is right, suddenly we don't like them. And we know that in this cancer culture world that we're in, that you're basically tiptoeing around like you're going to step on a landmine, like at any point you're going to say something that is going to go off. And so what do you do? What do I do? What do we do with the people who aren't Taylor Swift? We don't say anything at all. So like Taylor Swift or hate Taylor Swift, it doesn't really matter. The truth is that this many albums in, she's been doing this decade after decade. She certainly is an artist. She certainly is a celebrity and she's someone who understands business, right? Like she understands how to show up. But, but at the end of the day, she's a songwriter. I've, I've seen her documentary. I know that she sits down and she wants to create something. She wants to create music, which is a feeling. She wants to write lyrics that matter. She wants to, maybe she wants to be on top. Maybe she wants to sell records. Maybe she wants to make money. All that stuff is cool, but it doesn't take away the fact that, that at her heart, she, she uses her craft to try and connect with people. Think about this. Uh, a few weeks ago, Lizzo explains that in the song, Girls, that she had to change her lyrics. Why did she have to change her lyrics? Well, it seems that in the song, Girls, the song originally contained the lyrics, Hold my bag, bitch. Hold my bag. Do you see this shit? I'm a spaz. Apparently, the last line's been changed from the word spaz to hold me back. Apparently, spaz is controversial because people who may have cognitive disabilities or certain disabilities don't want to be called spaz, just like people who are obese or overweight don't want to be called fat. Makes us feel bad. But Lizzo said, I never even knew that. I didn't even hear that. I've only ever heard it used in my community. I didn't even know it was a slur. This is crazy. She's changed the lyrics. So we got Taylor Swift editing her music video because the word fat makes people uncomfortable. Makes fat people uncomfortable, right? And Lizzo's changing her lyrics spaz because um, that's a derogatory term used against certain people with disabilities because it means spastic, which means that you're like, moving in certain ways, and that makes people uncomfortable. I never want to suggest that we should go out of our way to make people uncomfortable, but if you're not willing to do something that gets noticed, if you're not willing to say something that matters, if you're not willing to put something out there that may risk offending someone, you're not actually putting anything out there that matters. Like, are our artists supposed to create art, create something that matters to them. You know, we're all told to like write what we know, right? Something true to them, a personal experience, something that matters, something that they love, something that fires them up, something that puts them into flow. They're supposed to get into this flow mode and create amazing things because that's what we admire about them. That's why their job is to be an artist or a performer. But are they supposed to do this and then what, forward the lyrics off to legal counsel 
forward them off to rules and regulations so they can say, oh, well, I'm not sure about this word or that word, and let's go ahead and change these things. And then they put out what? Elevator music? Nobody wants a top 10 single from the minds, the creative minds, and the legal team behind Procter & Gamble, right? Like, like nobody wants big corporate safe music or films or stories we want people to give us stuff that's different that matters that says something that feels right for the moment we want that but as soon as they say something that might offend you or not even you they might offend someone that you think (laughs) might get offended we suddenly want to cancel them we suddenly want to change our tune this is bananas like i I don't even know if I'm allowed to say bananas. I was going to say crazy. This is crazy. But I can't say crazy because I know that people who may have um, mental health issues or suffer from mental illness, this is a derogatory term for people who might have those challenges. So I can't even say crazy anymore. Um, And I don't even know if I can say bananas because that might offend someone. This is... um, (laughs) I was going to say insane. That's worse. Uh, This is ridiculous. Okay, there's a nice safe word. And so what happens to you and what happens to me? Because I'm not Taylor Swift. You're not Taylor Swift. I'm not Lizzo. You're not Lizzo. I don't have to worry that me putting out this video is going to get so much attention that I'm going to get this crazy amount of backlash saying, Mark, you can't say those things. But I'll probably get some backlash. (laughs) You know, when I was much heavier and I was overweight and I didn't feel good and I couldn't really, I couldn't run up the stairs without, you know, losing my breath. I couldn't tie my shoes without holding my breath. Wearing a seatbelt was uncomfortable. Going to a wedding sucked. I sweat all the time. I didn't feel good. I didn't look good. None of my clothes fit, and I felt like shit about myself. When I was that way, and I would say fat, versus now, four years later, when I'm way more fit, I have way more muscle, I focus on my diet, I focus on hydration, I focus on sleep, I work out 10 hours a week, I feel amazing, my cardio is great, my strength is great, I look better, I feel more confident... For me to say that where I am today is better than where I was four years ago makes people uncomfortable because guess what? Maybe people say, I can't do what you did, Mark. You can. I didn't think I could do it. I did. Yeah, yeah, but you spend 10 hours a week. I'm not telling you to spend 10 hours a week doing what you do, but if the thought of us falling short of expectations makes us uncomfortable, so uncomfortable that someone can't mention something, can't put it in their artwork, or can't even um, put it out in the world and say it, then are we just settling with who we are? Are we just supposed to settle or are we supposed to progress? Are we supposed to get better? Are we supposed to work towards our goals? And to do so means we're going to get uncomfortable. And if we're going to get uncomfortable about the work, why don't we get uncomfortable about calling a spade a spade? When I was overweight and obese, I was fat. And now I'm not overweight and I'm not obese and I feel better. I don't know what to make of that. I don't think Taylor Swift is a fat person. I don't think that she's fat. I can understand, you know, when I was, when I'm a 33, 32, 34 waist versus being a 40 or 42 or what have you, I can understand where you can look at them and go, how can you call yourself fat? Because you're not fat compared to me, but it doesn't change the message that Taylor's trying to put out. It doesn't change her past experiences or even how she feels about herself. And when the artists that we so admire step out into the ring as what Teddy Roosevelt said, right? It's not for the person on the sidelines to judge the person in the ring. It's for the person in the ring, paraphrasing here, to be able to to jump in. Think about a single thing, one thing that Lizzo or Taylor Swift or anyone that does these things and that you look up to, think about a single thing that they have to do and ask yourself if you'd have the courage to even do that. Think about getting ready to put on a designer gown, to step out of the limousine, to walk down the red carpet, step, 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 step. all the photos, every word you say being judged, every movement you make being judged, picked apart. Then you're at an award show, and guess what? They open the envelope, and they say your name, and you have to wait for a moment and take a breath and realize everyone's clapping and looking at you. And then you have to step up, walk up the stairs without tripping or falling. You have to speak in front of thousands of people, millions watching. You have to say something that will be in the news, picked apart day after day after day, all of the time. Think about that in that one moment. Would you have the courage to do that? Would you have the strength to work in in that situation? It's terrifying, isn't it? I would probably mess it up. You would probably mess it up as well. 
And yet the fact that they can conceptualize of the artwork, of the ideas, they can bring the team together, they can do the work, they can write the songs, they can write the script, they can direct the thing, they can go through all the stuff, they can put it out into the world and know that they will be judged on this thing and they still do it. That's what we should be commending. That's what we should be applauding. That's the courage that I admire in the artists that I look up to, whether it's business, whether it's a creative, an actor, or whether it's you know a singer or an athlete. The fact that they are willing to say, like, this is me, this is what I stand for, and frankly, take some really crazy hits in the media and then get back up and then try again and then move on. Like Taylor Swift's anti- hero music video and having to remove the word fat from it, that's not even a story. She's not Kanye, (laughs) right? Like I talked about Taylor Swift having to change her tune, talked about Lizzo having to change lyrics so she doesn't offend anyone. Kanye West, he's on the wrong side of history. He's on the wrong side of right and wrong. He is saying things that frankly, I mean, I, I don't even think today people should be thinking but they certainly shouldn't be saying aloud. They shouldn't certainly shouldn't be publicizing, and it's cost him a crazy amount. That's a real story. Like, what's happening over there with Kanye? That's a good reason to maybe hold someone accountable because it's not tied to artwork. It's not tied to a message. It's just, frankly, kind of stupid. Very, very dumb. Lizzo? Putting out some songs, not realizing that spastic is a word that you know what, frankly, offends some people, but does it? Taylor Swift stepping on a scale as a size six or eight or four, or whatever she happens to be in her documentary, she talks about the fact that when she was really a size two or, or four or something and she was on calorie restrictions, that she would feel dizzy, she felt lightheaded, she'd barely be able to get through her concert because the amount of cardio she did and the fact that she was starving herself and how now as a size six or eight or whatever she happens to be, she feels much more comfortable and much more healthy. But she's had her own challenges, and she will continue to have them because she's willing to do the stuff that, one, we're not willing to do, but two, we admire so much. And so I want us to somehow, I don't know how, but I want us to get over the fact that the very reason that we love the people that we love is the, is the same tool or, or pitchfork we use to later hold them accountable when we want to be an angry mob. That is number one. Number two, I want you to realize that the only way for people to pay attention to you is to be able to say the things that might get you in trouble, is to speak with authority. It's to have a point of view. It's to create an art or a message or some kind of use your craft to create something that, frankly, people want. And they don't want vanilla, and they don't want safe, And they don't want, you know, uh, Procter & Gamble or, uh, you know, whatever, PepsiCo's version or whatever it is. Pick a big, safe company. They don't want an insurance company's version of art. And so as long as you see these stories and one, if you're on the side where you're like, I don't like what they said, you got to get over that. And two, if you're on the other side where you're like, I'm a little bit afraid to put myself out there because what if? I heard this line once, and I think it was on the cover of a book, and I don't know where I got it from, but I love this line. Dogs don't bark at parked cars. You got to be moving. You got to be making a ruckus. You got to be doing something, putting yourself out there. Your art, your message, your point of view, you have to be willing to do it. You're going to get a few dogs barking at you, but If people have taken note enough to get pissed off at what you have to say, good news, they've taken note enough to also like what you're doing. Some people won't like it. Other people will. But all in all, you need to be willing to say something. It's what you admire and love and hope one day to do. It's the same reason that you love actresses, actors, songwriters, bands, musicians, directors, entrepreneurs, anyone creative, anyone with an idea, anyone who's actually making it happen, it's what you admire in them. So we need to figure this out. Say things worth saying, do things worth doing, and you should be so lucky to have someone come along and want to critique you.